You're watching Power Nation. Today on Engine Power, we find a home for one of our all-time favorite engines. Hey everyone, welcome to Engine Power. Today we are going to be working on an engine that has been kicking around our shop for a while now, and it has been through a couple of different iterations already. This is our 427 cubic inch LSX Extreme Crate engine that we picked up from the guys down at Late Model Engines in Houston, Texas, or as you know them, LME. Now, if you are not familiar with this extremely versatile engine, check this out. It started with an LSX block loaded with race-ready components, and it was rated for up to 2,000 horsepower, so we knew it could handle anything we threw at it. The heads were a custom LS7 six-bolt CNC ported design with 2250 titanium intake valves and 1600 Inconel exhaust valves. Heavy-duty Manly 3.8 pushrods and stainless steel Crower 1.8 ratio rockers took care of the valve train. LME's billet aluminum LS7 intake manifold came next. A turbo system was fabbed up, featuring an 86-85 millimeter Gen 2 precision turbocharger. Kenny Duttweiler is a pioneer and a legend in the field of turbocharging, and when he offered his support on the build, we were honored to have him in the shop. In no time flat, he dialed in our engine for maximum power. We used Race Gas Ultra to increase our pump gas to 112 octane. After several dyno runs and some adjustments to timing and boost, the engine yielded a stout 1,210 horsepower and 993 pound-feet of torque. We couldn't wait to get this beast into a vehicle. Considering its big power numbers, putting it in our 1,900-pound Tesla wasn't really a practical decision, but it sure was fun. Several months later, the Detroit Muscle Team showed up with a 73 Javelin in nice shape. They were looking for more power from a modern engine, and we suggested the 427. To meet their power requirements, we set up the engine in a naturally aspirated configuration. It produced 647 horsepower and 548 pound-feet of torque on pump gas. After the AMC fans brought out their torches and pitchforks, Detroit Muscle wisely decided to use their original 304 for their project. For the moment, our 427 lacked a home. Recently, the crew from Music City Trucks found themselves behind the wheel of a Jeep Trackhawk with wide grins on their faces. Lacking the funds to buy their own, they concocted a plan to build one themselves. They asked us to take care of the engine. One of their big requests, a supercharger. In order to get this engine back to its boosted form, but also have it fit in the application, we went with a root-style supercharger from Summit Racing. This is a Magnuson that was built to order for us and is normally found on a C6 Corvette with an LS7. We also had to get a stock front LS7 accessory drive, and since the engine was carbureted before, we had to get a throttle body and a standalone ECU and wiring harness to run on the dyno and in the vehicle. But before we can see all that horsepower made out of the dyno, we have to get it all bolted to the engine, so to the assembly area. Before we can actually bolt the supercharger down, we have to take it apart, which seems counterintuitive, but the manifold bolts actually go through the base. So we have to take the top off, the fuel rails, and the coolant ports on the front in order to access the bolts. After unbolting the fuel rails, we can gently lift them away from the fuel injectors. Then we'll remove the Allen head screws holding the coolant manifolds in place. They have a tight O-ring seal, so we'll go slow and easy sliding them out. At first glance, it looks like the rotors are going the wrong direction on this, but this supercharger works differently than a conventional one. Instead of forcing the air directly down into the intake, it actually forces it up into this chamber, and then the air is pushed into the ports on the side. Before we install the supercharger, the steam vent line supplied with the system bolts into place. Also included in the kit are Cometic intake gaskets. They are required for proper fitment of the supercharger. Since the intake manifold bolts are inaccessible after the supercharger is installed, 
blue thread locker is applied before tightening them. They are torqued in sequence to 106 pound inches. Yes, pound inches. The lid bolts also receive thread locker and are likewise tightened to 106 pound inches. Up next, the supercharged 427 gets standalone fuel injection, then it's put through the ringer in the dyno cell. The pistons in your engine have to go through millions of combustion cycles in their lifetime, so it is critical to choose the right ones, and there are several styles to pick from. Dished pistons are often found in lower compression factory engines, as well as boosted builds where lower static compression is needed. Flat top pistons with valve reliefs are common in naturally aspirated power plants with higher static compression ratios and minimal valve clearance. Domed pistons are great for very high compression engines or engines with an open combustion chamber, like a Hemi. Modern pistons are normally constructed of aluminum, but there are a few different ways that they're made. Casting is a quick and affordable method to produce pistons that have a long service life in lower performance applications. Cast pistons often are made from a hyper-eutectic alloy where the high silicon content gives them more scuff resistance at higher operating temperatures. Forging is similar to casting, but the piston undergoes an additional process where it is forced into a final shape over a die, giving it even more strength. Forged pistons work great in high-powered engines which experience the toughest operating conditions. With any piston, the specific type of alloy used determines the hardness or ductility of the piston. Most factory applications and engines under 400 horsepower typically press fit the wrist pin into the connecting rod. Normally, this is done at a machine shop because it requires specialized equipment and experienced professionals to ensure a good result. Spiral locks and sur clips are used when the wrist pin floats in the connecting rod and can be installed at home with simple hand tools and a fair amount of patience. As you can see, you've got lots of options when it comes to choosing pistons. Summit Racing Equipment can help you find the right pistons for your engine. Our supercharged LSX 427 continues with our ATI harmonic dampener that we got from Summit Racing Equipment. It's SFI approved, has integral serpentine pulleys, and a provision for a crank keyway. Also from Summit is an AC Delco water pump and a GM alternator bracket. Round one, Topolinski. Hey, do you know why uh, bees' hairs are sticky? No, what? Because they use a honeycomb. <laughs> As part of the GM accessory kit, we got a stock power steering pump and idler pulley. To control the port fuel injection and ignition system on our supercharged 427, we went with a Phytech Ultima LS standalone ECU kit. This is a self-learning system that replaces a factory ECU and has all the capabilities you would need for a street or performance engine. It works with any Gen 3 or Gen 4 LS engine with a 24 or 58 tooth reluctor and has outputs for cooling fans, a tachometer, speedometer, and a fuel pump. The kit comes with a custom plug and play wiring harness, a handheld touchscreen controller with a windshield mount, an oxygen sensor, and a three bar map sensor for boost levels up to 30 PSI. The nice thing about this system is that it is self learning and any additional tuning you want to do can be done on the fly with the handheld programmer. No laptop needed. And to finish out the system, we also picked up one of their 102 millimeter throttle bodies. For our power level, we needed to swap out the injectors included with the supercharger. We chose a set of Dietchworks 90 pound per hour injectors. After lubing the O-rings with synthetic grease, the injectors pop into the fuel rails. The coolant manifolds are reinstalled. Just like when we remove them, slow and easy does it. The fuel rails are next. The Phytech map sensor gets bolted down, 
and the 102 millimeter throttle body finishes it off. Earl's Performance Plumbing offers adapters to replace the stock push-on style fuel rail connector with an AN style fitting. Since we've never run a setup like this before, we fabbed up a throttle bracket that mounts to the top of our blower, making sure to re-torque the bolts to spec. After that, we'll install the wideband O2 sensor supplied with the Phytech system. The electrical connections begin with the fuel injectors followed by the coil packs. Then we are ready for the plug and play wiring harness and the ECU. All the connections are labeled so installation is quick and easy. The Magnuson kit includes a heat exchanger for the supercharger. Just for dyno purposes, we'll temporarily install it on our dyno cart using zip ties and a light touch. Connections to the supercharger are made with quick disconnect fittings, which are a breeze to install. The hose is attached to the reservoir, heat exchanger, and pump using a combination of worm gear and spring clamps. Up next, high octane fuel for a high performance engine. We just have a couple of items on our pre-flight checklist and the LSX will be ready for dyno runs. We have to upload a calibration to the ECU, so we'll go down to right cal to ECU and click enter. And basically what this does is tells the ECU what kind of engine it's working with. There's a couple different options for a 24 tooth or a 58 tooth LS and then if you're using it to control a transmission, there's two options there for a 4L60E or a 4L80E. We're not going to run a transmission obviously because it's on the dyno. And since we have such a unique combination here, Phytech's customer service actually hooked us up and those guys are very helpful. So they wrote us our own custom calibration that will help get us started in the tuning aspect. So we're gonna hit write to, and then that will write that calibration to the ECU. So once it writes it to the ECU, we have to cycle the key. So we'll go up to dashboard and then we'll turn the ignition off and make sure that all these values disappear usually takes about 15 seconds and there they go. So now we can turn the key back on and we can go to our initial setup and set up the parameters of our engine. Dang. Yeah! When we get it all warmed up, first thing we're going to do is just to make sure that everything is copacetic, let's uh, make a hit from like I'll take it as low as 2,000. I think it'll load at 2,000. Like yeah. 2,000 to 5,000 at like 600 RPM per second just to make sure our tune-up is in the right yeah. zone. Loaded right down at 2,000. Yeah. Whoop, yeah. Look at that right there. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, nice. 564.9 yeah. at 5,000. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Wow. Tor torque is yeah. still going up. Wow. Tor torque is up at 593. Wow. That's a nice graph already. I mean, like you said, we're not even close to the peaks. Our supercharged 427 LSX will run fine on 93 octane pump gas in the vehicle, but since we have it in the dyno cell and we want to push it a little bit harder, we decided we wanted some better quality fuel for it, so we're going to mix up some race gas, race fuel concentrate. Now, there's a couple of different versions depending on your application. One is the race gas ultra. This formula is designed for high specific output, high horsepower applications like blown, nitrous, turbocharged, or even naturally aspirated versions. Mixing this entire 32 ounce can into four gallons of 93 octane pump gas will give you 112 octane, which has the same BTU value of distilled race gasoline. And not only that, it raises the chemical energy and the oxygen content of the fuel. 
we will be mixing up some of the regular race fuel concentrate for our engine. Using the blend chart on the back, we can mix the fuel to whatever octane we feel that we need. Two ounces of fuel concentrate per gallon will raise the octane four full numbers. We're mixing our fuel to 103 octane. This will give us a nice safety margin for making dyno run after dyno run while getting our tune-up dialed in. It would be easy just to max out the octane, but sometimes too much octane can actually hurt horsepower. But that's a subject for another day. Bad. 697, yeah. 591 for 697, but it's at 7,000, yeah. still climbing. Yep. You know what's interesting? This thing only has four pounds of boost. Yeah, and yeah, pretty much all the way through. The graph is, is really, really nice, super smooth. Um, that thing's gonna be mean. It, no, it's, that's really mean. It's already but, mean. I, yeah. I think we can make it a little bit meaner. Whether you're doing a basic tune-up or a complete vehicle rebuild, you want the right parts at a great price. RockAuto.com makes that easy. Just select your vehicle's info and you will find all of the parts available for your ride conveniently organized by category. RockAuto.com's deep inventory gives you options ranging from economy all the way up to premium aftermarket. You can also get those crucial items needed to get the job done, like automotive fluids, lubricants, and tools. Quick shipping means you can get started on your project in no time. RockAuto.com gives you the power of a parts counter computer in the comfort of your own home. We set out to build an engine worthy of the Jeep Trackhawk, and now we find out whether our 427 makes the grade. Oh. When we ordered our supercharger, we planned ahead and got a smaller drive pulley with the system. To make a little more boost, the 96 millimeter pulley is being swapped out for an 84 millimeter one. Before we change it out, we needed to remove the throttle body for clearance. Orange thread locker is applied to the bolts and the new unit gets installed. It's as simple as that. See what I saw? That's some big power right there. That was a huge jump in power. Oh! 788 horse? Whoa. At 6,800? Yeah. 677 at 4,700. Whoa. How much boost was that? Oh, yeah. Look there at that. Uh, right around six. six little, little, yep, yep. Hovering around six pounds of boost. That's a huge jump. That's too. a huge jump. Mark is hard at work getting the Jeep together, but we figured he'd want to hear his engine run. Hey man, come check this out. We've been fuzzing on your project. I know you're down there working on it. Yeah. So we, we got a little surprise for you here. We, uh, for your competition to the factory vehicle, we needed at least to equal the power, right? Right. Well, I think we could do it a little yeah. better. I think you're gonna like it. I think you got it. This is gonna be good. I originally had a pulley on that produced uh, almost about four pounds of boost, right? Okay. We figured we could uh, we could pump that up a little, so we put a, uh, went from a 96 millimeter to an 84 millimeter pulley. The engine on that, uh, whatever that thing is, SRT, has 11 or 12 pounds of boost, so we're not gonna be that high, so. But, I don't think we need to be that high. <laughs> because. Not with this thing. We're gonna make a pull from 3,000 to 7,300 a second, so. Uh, all right, are you ready for some for some goodness here? I'm I'm ready. <laughs> oh, are you ready man. for this? Sounds rowdy. 
785 horse, oh, 680 pound feet of tar. Whoa, that, that, that's not the bad. number. We, we, we are pretty we, uh, styling on our Reach your goal? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, is, that, is that enough? 707.1 would have been enough. Yeah, the part yeah. that gets me is the torque. I mean, look at the torque. 650 from 3,500 all the way to six. Oh, uh, it's just, yeah. Over. I mean, that's. All the torque, all the nice, time. Nice, nice. The graph curve. on these, because of, uh, you know, we have a, a, a very good ECU, we have a very good uh, way of controlling both spark and fuel. Our graphs are really, really nice. It's making power where it should. I mean, the, this engine you know, has enough valve train and it has enough good parts in it to make a lot more power and turn it way higher. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, 707 horsepower would have been more than we needed, really, yeah, for this. Yeah. I mean, this thing's just gonna be a tire fryer. Oh, yeah. No matter what. Oh, yeah. So this, I mean, this just, uh, I don't know, that just takes yeah. it to the next <laughs> level. That's... We figured you'd like it. We're very happy that this engine has a home now. Right. Yeah, so, uh, and there's great. a lot of good parts on this engine, and uh, uh, I, this is one of those things where this is one of those projects where everything's going to come together just like it should, and uh, this thing is going to be outstanding. I can't wait oh, to yeah. see it done. And I say I know I didn't didn't want to pull you away for what you're doing over there. No, that's okay. I figured uh, you wanted to see this. Yeah, though. absolutely. Yeah. So, when can I have it? Uh, well, uh, soon. Well, yeah, we're, 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 we're gonna we're gonna give her the once over and make sure everything's copacetic, and okay. uh, it'll come down to you. Awesome. Thanks, guys. That yeah. is our, our pleasure. That is. Unbelievable. To find out more about anything you've seen today, check out PowerNationTV.com.